Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to one more game from 1906 Wood Chess Tournament. So as you know, uh, Wood Chess Club just organized the first tournament and they invited very strong players. So of course we have Akiba Rubinstein and Gersalve, the strongest players uh, from that club, but also the legend of chess Mikhail Chigorin was invited and if you are interested how Akiba Rubinstein played against uh, Chigorin, you have over there, click the card, you know, and, and check these movies um, after this one. Uh, however, the last player who was played, because that was the four players tournament, was Alexander Flamberg. And he was a very interesting uh, player who uh, is not well known, um, you know, as the player of that period. However, he was uh, pretty strong, probably in top three, uh, for sure top five uh, players in Poland and uh, uh, definitely the strongest player in Warsaw. And what do we know about Alexander Flamberg? Uh, he raised in uh, England, however he was, he was Polish, and then when he came back to uh, Warsaw, he became the strongest player there, and he was invited for this tournament, so this was his uh, first tour tournament, and and have to play already against uh, so strong players like Rubinstein, Chigorin and Salve. And he got third place. And one, once I introduce you uh, to Alexander Flamberg, let's jump into the game. So Alexander Flamberg, uh, his ranking according to chess metrics, 2538 and he's 25 years old and he play as black and Akiba Rubinstein 23 years old already very strong uh, player 2613 and Rubinstein open with d4 we have d5 c4 e6 queen's gambit declined 9c3 knight f6 bishop on g5 bishop on e7 theory uh, doesn't change much for you know over one century knight f3 knight b on d7 e3 and here we have castle by Flamberg, rook on c1 by Rubinstein and here black of course can go for c6, uh, for a6, for h6, uh, even d takes on c4 is possible, however we have b6. Uh, this is a system which is not played often but it's quite solid, for example in 1991 Nigel Short played um, against Boris Gelfand and uh, won that game, so definitely solid system. We have C takes on D5, uh, E takes on D5, Knight on E5 and Bishop on B7. Bishop on D3 by Rubinstein and C5 attacking the center. And here Rubinstein play F4, um, not very common move. Um, and probably black uh, should play something like C takes on D4. This actually was played in 1998, so this is known. Uh, however, it's very, very equal uh, for, for both sides and quite boring. So after E takes on D4, Knight E4, Bishop E7, Queen E7, and after castle, knight d on f6, and this position is, you know, it's a deadly equal. Uh, however, you know, it's of course playable for both sides, so a lot of remaneuvering and, you know, can the game could continue. However, in this position, after f4, um, Flamberg play rook on e8, and it looks like, you know, pretty normal move, uh, but it changed the character of the position. We have castle by white, and here is another decision by Flamberg, what to do next. C takes d4, uh, it's still a possibility, but Flamberg decided to change the character of position totally, so c4. Now, uh, he want to have these three pawns attacking on the, on the queen side, you know, with this pawn also, against uh, these two pawns, uh, but does he has a time to you know make this attack it's not really easy because white gonna have uh, quite some advantage on the uh, on the king side so we have bishop on b1 bishop is still looking on h7 and the rook is already you know um, on the position to play so it's not locked on a1 uh, we have a6 so the plan continue with b5 and now rook on f3 uh, 
Black probably that was the last chance to play something like knight on e4 and exchange some pieces. So bishop on e7, queen on e7 was possible. Uh, this bishop would be locked forever, probably would be good to exchange. Rook h3. And now if knight on f6, white would have time to jump and pick up the pawn on c4. Probably b5 now, uh, queen h5. This knight would, you know, prevent that, but uh, in the cost of pawn, so probably not worth it. Knight on f6 with attack on the queen and the game could continue, for example, from that position. White stands better, but black still have, you know, um, some possibilities to play. However, Flamberg play b5 immediately. And now we have rook on h3. And now let's think what to do, how to continue the attack and what actually black can do. And I will just show you a couple of lines which are recommended by the engine initially, but they are not really, really great. So H6 is recommended by the engine. However, you can't really take this bishop. That would be very risky. So for example, queen on F3 and after taking, F takes on g5 and now this knight actually can't be moved. If the if the knight is moved, we would have a checkmate here. So that's not an option. So probably knight on e5, d takes on e5 and this knight still can't move. Knight on e4 and we have queen h5 and checkmate is coming. And black actually has nothing to do. It's impossible. Um, so f5 maybe making some space e6 is you know uh, solving all these uh, escaping problems and black are actually you know doomed this is a checkmate coming so h takes on g5 would be very very bad idea so maybe knight takes on e5 first d takes on e5 and now black can decide what to do knight on e4 it looks like okay now it's possible to play this but now we have bishop on h6 uh, with the plan of sacrificing on g7 and this attack would be extremely strong with the uh, with the queen you know uh, attacking and the rook attacking so uh, very bad bishop on f Eight probably could be played, but then just exchanging bishop for this active knight and then queen on g3, uh, queen c7, bishop g5, and now it's still very strong attack. Black are in a big troubles. Not a really great idea. So uh, maybe d4 attacking the knight and attacking the queen. That looks quite good of course queen can take this um, this bishop then the knight can be taken and that would be pretty attractive for black but white can actually play queen on g3 which is much stronger and now you know very strong attack still coming uh, h5 probably would be the best uh, to, to do here h takes on g5 uh, is recommended by the engine but it looks very very bad uh, h5 is also um, possible bishop takes on f6 bishop takes on f6 and knight e4 now and this attack is you know uh, even stronger very dangerous bishop on e4 bishop on e4 knight now h4 queen on g4 and the uh, rook is under attack so rook b8 and of course this can't be taken because of, of this but still white have a very big advantage here and black would be you know uh, in big big trouble so knight on e5 in this position uh, also doesn't really work maybe bishop on c8 bishop on c8 looks really attractive because now this knight actually can attack the knight and with attack on the queen and with attack on the rook however white actually can move knight to c6 with attack on the queen so queen on c7 
exchanging this bishop, which would be very important defender. And after rook on e7, bishop takes on h6, exchanging this um, piece, piece for two pawns and get the solid attack. What black can do now? Rook e6, you know, uh, making some escaping uh, spot for the for the black king. However, bishop on f5 with attack on the rook. Rook can be moved. Queen g3, king f8 and uh, white actually can play something like e4 with the threat e5 so black would have to take it but then rook on e1 and this rook actually controls the open file very dangerous uh black has you know two pawns for the for for the piece but it's still you would not li like to play as black in this position definitely so this move h6 doesn't really good and I think Flamberg just told okay if I play h6 why to play it if I never can take this g5 so it's not even a threat so he decided to play knight on f8 bringing another defender to h7 uh, and here is the moment where actually feel free to pause the video and find the best continuation for black and it's not you know brilliant tactic it's a simple tactic to improve the position get a little bit of you know a material advantage and positional advantage very typical for akiba rubinstein and actually look at this structure it's very common uh, in the games that you can you know leave the rook um, and attack on the h file and also you can create you know some stone wall uh, bring your pieces there so uh, and especially with this bishop a lot of things are possible so feel free to pause the video while i enjoy my cup of tea okay ready so as i said it's nothing spectacular but you just have to you know calculate so bishop on f6 uh, getting away one defender of h7 and now bishop on f6 and now bishop on h7 anyway this is possible because after knight on h7 queen on h5 is a very strong move and now this knight actually is trapped uh so white would just win the pawn um a very important pawn on h7 so now this knight of course can't go because um because that would be a checkmate so not possible and also making some space also doesn't work because um f6 would be controlled by this pawn uh, so also not possible this is why flamberg here play queen on c7 we have queen on h7 we check king f8 and now e4 e4 so opening the the center by rubinstein not much choice for black so black uh, have to takes on e4 and we have knight takes on e4 and here black has to make a decision because these knights look very very dangerous of course black would like to have this pair of bishop but it's uh, impossible now uh, this bishop is under attack and uh, what to do probably bishop on e4 would be the best here queen on e4 and now g6 would be very good because this bishop actually can control uh, h8 so uh it would be not easy to attack by white uh, so that would be the best for black probably so for example b3 uh, it's very strong rook a on d8 uh, exchanging the pieces and now don't take on c4 yet because queen can just win the rook uh, and then after taking the queen you know uh, your e4 queen is hanging so not an option but rook h on c3 is okay already queen a5 and maybe that the game would continue uh white stands of course better uh, white are more active but black has some you know hope with this past pawn so uh, maybe that would be the option however here flamber uh, take a bishop takes on e5 uh, we have f takes on e5 and now queen on c6 attacking the knight and if knight is moved then attacking the g2 so that would be a checkmate so uh, the only move rook on e1 queen on d5 now attacking the d4 uh, and rubinstein play queen on h8 now moving the the king to e7 and now um, feel free to pause the video and think about this position what would you actually play 
as white how to continue uh, there are at least two ways of uh, you know continue two different concepts uh, what is your choice while i enjoy my cup of tea okay ready so uh if you are you know active and aggressive player probably queen on g7 is uh, the strongest move and actually it's recommended by the engine because queen on d4 is uh, not even you know so harm so king h1 and what to play next actually black are in big troubles queen on f6 is coming so king d8 would have to be played um then the queen can take on f7 this uh, rook can come on h7 that would be really really crushing for um <laughs> for black um and bishop on e4 is unplayable because of queen on f6 king d7 the only move and now e6 winning the queen so rook on e6 uh, queen on d4 and winning the queen so not an option uh so queen on g7 however rubinstein play style is you know improve the position make the position even stronger and he decide to defend this d4 pawn so he play queen on h4 with check king on d7 and now queen on f2 defending this d4 uh, we have king on c7 making some space and bringing the the king you know to the safety and also uh, still keeping an eye on these marching pawns uh, we have rook on f3 uh, more pressure to f7 now f7 has to be defended so we have rook on e7 and here knight on c3 attacking the queen uh, queen has to be moved and uh, would stay on this diagonal you know to protect f7 pawn and now black has short a period of time you know for the breathing because now this rook is under attack so rubinstein has to waste the tempo rook on f4 and now black can play rook on d8 bringing an um, extra defender and now we have rook on f1 so um f7 is under you know huge attack we have rook d on d7 and now queen on g3 so after attacking um the pawn on f7 now rubinstein is moving the pieces to attack um, other um, objects but flamberg in this situation uh, proves that he is a very strong player he play queen on b6 so uh, getting some counterplay on d4 now uh, this could be very very dangerous and white definitely has to do something about that knight on e2 you know prevents that attack uh, so here we have queen on c6 back on this um, diagonal and here you know uh, feel free to pause the video one more time and find uh, another continuation where white actually uh, can win another pawn and you know secure the game in a very very solid way why I enjoy my cup of tea one more time. Okay, ready? So if you found queen on g7, think how would you continue the game? Actually, this is a losing move. So uh, that's not the way you would win uh, because after f5, uh, you have the problem. This is a checkmate. So the queen is under attack. Queen should do something. So queen on g3 is the only move. Rook on g7. Queen on f3. Queen g6. Now queen is under attack. And now this battery attacks g2. Uh, white has to move. And of course that would be uh, crashing for white. So not the option here. But if you found rook on f7, then congratulations, that's the move. And now rook f7 is impossible because of e6 with check. That's a crushing. Not only that you win back the material, that's not, uh, not the point. King on b6, e takes on f7, and now promotion is coming. That is the thing. So rook d8, and now uh, after exchanging, white actually are up 
the rook and of course winning that game. So uh, this is why after rook on f7, uh, Rubinstein won just another pawn. So very beautiful hit. Uh, we have king on b6 by Flamberg and here Rubinstein just exchanged material. Uh, he is up two pawns, so uh, he just want to, you know, secure his win. Rook on e7, rook on e7. Knight f4, uh, we have queen on e4, now attacking um, the pawn on d4, and Rubinstein now can play a very strong queen on f2, you know, uh, protecting d4, but also, uh, you know, pushing uh, the pawns with check would be very unpleasant. However, uh, with two extra pawns, uh, Rubinstein plays simple. Queen on b6 with check, so black are forced to exchange the queens. Uh, and now rook on d7, attacking the d4 uh, pawn, we have rook on d1, and here b4. So now time for black, you know, to counter uh, attack on the queen side, but is that enough? Uh, the answer is not. White are too strong here, we have e6, and black has to do something with this rook, if rook on d8, um, then actually we would have just e7. Let's just check uh, who gonna be first. Rook on e8, d5, c3, d6, c2, and now actually white have to play on c1. Uh, black, yes, can pick up one of the pawns. Uh, and after king on d6, rook dot d2, it's very strong. King on e6, and now rook on d1. And now, of course, the rook can't be taken because of the of the pawn. So king on f7. And now the simplest way uh, to win is knight on e5, uh, sacrificing this pawn. But actually, uh, white gonna win another pawn because after king on e7, rook d7, king f6, and just exchanging the pieces. Now this rook attacks um, uh, b2, also attacks g7. Black can decide which pawn they're gonna lose. So, for example, uh, rook on e5, rook b4, and of course, two extra pawns in this very simple rook endings is uh, winning for white. So, there is no point to play. This is why we have rook on d6 attacking the pawn but also attacking the knight behind. The problem is after e7, which Rubinstein play. Uh, the knight can't be actually taken uh, because of the promotion. Rook on e6 also doesn't work because of d5 uh, coming, so uh, not really an option. Flamberg play bishop on c6, and it looks like he controlled the situation, but feel free to pause the video for the last time in this game. I know I ask you for many times, and these are not spectacular moves, but this, I think, is the style of playing which can happen in many games and, you know, uh, it's not often to, you know, to win but by spectacular tactics, but by winning, you know, with the simple strong moves uh, is much more, you know, common in the regular games. While I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay. So there is only one move, actually, a knight on e5, and it's extremely strong. Now, what's the threat? This is the threat, of course, winning the material, winning the exchange. Um, and if king actually moves, for example, to b5, then just exchange uh, for the defender and then promote. So that's not the option. Uh, if bishop is eliminated, then promotion is coming. So bishop should move somewhere. Uh, it doesn't matter where. So bishop on b5, for example, but knight on c4 anyway. Of course, knight can't be taken because of the promotion, so uh, not an option. So king on c7 would have to be played, knight d6, uh, king d6, and now rook e1. Bishop on e8 and now rook on e5 and look at this rook. This rook is so powerful. First, uh, it's closing the king in this jail and it, nothing can be done. Look at this uh, squares, dark squares. So this bishop can't help at all. Uh, and also this rook helps on h5, which is very important because now the simplest plan for white would be, you know, just advance these pawns, 
create the past pawn and you know um, win the game if it's not possible for some reason uh, this king actually can walk uh, and pick up these pawns and also it's impossible to do anything so uh, this is why uh, in this position after knight on e5 Alexander Flamberg resigned the game and okay so that's all for this tournament uh, Akiba Rubinstein won that tournament and uh, Mikhail Chigorin was the second Alexander Flamberg was third and Gersalve for some reason <laughs> you know uh, that was not his best tournament he lost most of the games and he got the fourth place and as always I would like you to you know press like if you like this video and if for some reason you don't like this video press unlike and leave the comment what do you think about this style of game it's you know happened in many games of Akiba Rubinstein and we can say that you know Akiba Rubinstein style improving the position of the pieces and then you know just winning by uh, you know advancing step by step and if you don't want to miss any other movies about uh, Kiba Rubinstein press subscribe push the bell button and thanks for watching and see you in the next one